Good morning, guys. Welcome to today's training. Today, we're talking about feeling like we lost ourselves. For a lot of us, especially us that are wrestling with codependency, we've been through a narcissistic relationship or two, or you grew up with inattentive, unavailable, or narcissistic parents or abusive parents, we may have never even known ourselves. But a lot of times, we feel like we've lost ourselves as well. We've We've made some traction in our world and then we get sucked into a relationship and we feel like we've we've lost an aspect of ourself or our entire sense of self. We wonder, you know, who am I? Who have I become? How did I get here? How did this happen to me? That kind of thing. It's been a it's a very 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 common experience for people that are wrestling with narcissistic abuse in their world or chronic neglect to feel like they lost themselves or they never had themselves to begin with. So that will be today's topic. Now, if you're new to me, I'm Marshall Berkshire, and I help codependents rediscover their happiness and their well-being after codependency and narcissistic relationships. I need to share this out to the community real quick. The community is a is your safe haven where you can find guidance, tools, support, and understanding about the journey that you've been through and the experience you've been you've endured fundamentally right that you have uh, survived in this experience so uh, the link is above on facebook below on youtube you can jump right in i'm gonna go here my brain's a little uh i had a good exercise this morning but man it's still a little bit foggy so all right come on facebook you can do it but yeah when we are wrestling with knowing who we are after we, after exiting a narcissistic relationship, is a it's a very common, very natural, very expected experience with this. And I'm going to show you why. Let's see. Going to click the share button because everything wants to run slow today. Yeah, it's not going to do it yet. So. <sighs> All right, some days I just me and technology are not very happy about all right there it goes all right so now it's shared or at least it should be shared um but yeah here we are guys this is the adventure of knowing ourselves after narcissistic abuse or even discovering ourselves for the first time after narcissistic relationships or nar or having a childhood with with chronic narcissism involved in it for instance you grew up in a system that promoted narcissism it could be a religious system. It could be a secular system. Uh, but the, the family unit has this disease in it where they're chronically doing this stuff. It's a big deal. It's a chronic issue. And it's, and it's, it's very, very common. So here we go. So how, how did I lose myself? So, man, I'm combobulated today. Losing ourself is a common function of what I call transactional love. So in the seduction abuse discard cycle of narcissistic abuse, your value is anchored to what you do. Okay, so your worth is determined ha determined by the benefit you bring to the relationship. Okay, and what this does is it creates a, a donkey and the carrot effect. Okay, so you're the donkey, the narcissist or abusive person is the one with the carrot and they're dangling it in front of you. They're promising you little breadcrumbs, little love here, little love there, little approval over here. And then they're dangling this with the promise that you will finally have their love, their acceptance, their approval if you do this thing right. Now, this isn't an explicit agreement. This is an agreement that's occurring subconsciously that is implied with the actions of pleasing others. And it's implied with their promises. It's implied with the fact that they seduced you. They went through this huge rigmarole typically. And sometimes they don't even do the seduction depending on how pliable they believe you are to their will. They went through this rigmarole of bringing you through a, a seduction process to convince you that they had feelings for you, that you meant a lot to them and that in some facet you um, are critical to their life and well-being and for a codependent for someone who has a very low sense of themselves they, they don't have a high level of connection with their innate value 
their their real or true voice or their genuine vision for themselves being critical to someone is a big deal because that means um, we're needed and if we're needed we'll be kept and if we're going to be kept we'll, we can feel safe right we don't have to wrestle anymore with the fear of being abandoned the fear of being uh, discarded or thrown away instead we can we can finally have the love that we want and be able to be ourselves and that kind of thing it's this dynamic we start to lose ourselves in because in order to chase the carrot, to get the breadcrumb, to get the love, we have to stop paying attention to ourselves, stop paying attention to the person on our back, the weight that they put on us, the way that they're driving us with their whip and with their promises and with their criticism. And we have to focus on that carrot and try to get the carrot. And I call this external orientation. So... The brain has two ways of understanding itself. One's called external orientation and one's called internal orientation. So with external orientation, the brain is trained or, or taught to see itself through the eyes of others. It wants to understand itself fundamentally. And so it does that by looking at itself through the way another person sees it itself. So in my life, I would do that through uh, girls, women, my mother, and then the religion I was in. And I would look at myself through the way they, they said they saw me, specifically through the way they treated me. And when I saw myself through that lens, then it became really clear to me that I wasn't worth much to them, that I had big flaws and I was a, a sinful, bad, unhealthy, you know, harmful person was the message I got most of the time. And this dynamic taught me to believe a falsity about myself. I created a false identity in me because I was seeing myself through their eyes, which wasn't accurate to anything. It was only their manipulations to try to get me to do something. Now, external orientation is a natural product of child or actually what's called individuation. Children start out with external orientation. When we're infants and toddlers, we're seeking the world through the eyes of our parents so we can understand it because we don't have a roadmap to reality at that point. Now, if we have unhealthy, unattuned, narcissistic parents, we're going to integrate or internalize their points of view as truth because we don't have any idea what is truth. We assume that they are the ones that know what truth is, and so we're going to follow them. This is how we get this deeply ingrained sense of worthlessness, for instance. This is how we also get this deeply um, entrenched sense of shame and guilt and emptiness and loneliness is because we've not been seen and received for who we are. We've only been used for what we provide. And a lot of times, and specifically with narcissistic parents, that's what the result is. With, with unattentive parents or parents who are even codependent, we tend to feel smothered or we tend to feel invisible um, and fundamentally, we're still being praised for what we do and not really loved for who we are. So it puts us back in this thing called transactional love. And with this dynamic of seeking ourselves through this external orientation and having this unhealthy people um, shaping our sense of self, we conclude that love is earned and that we have to chase it. And that's a fundamental hallmark of this thing called transactional love. This is why we don't know ourselves. Because we have to chase ourselves, we're chasing the illusion of ourselves, the ideal self, through the eyes of others. So how do we get out of this? It's this process called self-referencing or individuation. And it creates a different kind of habit that I call internal orientation. And internal orientation is literally the opposite of external orientation. It's like, how do I feel about the way they're treating me? How do I feel about what they're saying to me? Who am I in this situation? Who do I want to be in this situation? What are my thoughts, feelings, wants, and needs? Me. It's referencing me in contrast to them rather than interpreting myself through their lens. This is how we start to really know ourselves. This is where that sense of, of emptiness and loneliness starts to close and we start to feel a fullness and an awareness and a knowledge of who we are. This is where we start to sense into our being, into our nature, into our own innate value, 
our intrinsic worth that's already built into us. The real trick here is we, we have to train ourselves to become aware of that innate value. And I'll be talking about that more here in a couple of trainings. But today, it's all about this idea of I feel like I lost myself. And we did. We lost ourselves because we're chasing the carrot. The carrot is their approval and their rejection. We want their approval. We want to avoid the rejection. Okay? We get their approval. It gives us permission to feel like we're worthy of love, that we are a valuable human being, that we're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. But when they reject us, then our sense of worth is crushed. It, it collapses, and we feel like we're disgusting, we're discardable, we're disposable. We shouldn't exist. We're not worth it. What's wrong with us? This kind of stuff starts to emerge. And those are hallmarks of this carrot being dangled in front of us and us chasing it, aka transactional love. So if you're wrestling with this, guys, know that it is understandable and it is normal as a part of codependency because it's part of the abuse cycle you've been going through. Because through seduction, you're convinced that they love you and that you're finally worth loving, knowing, and keeping. But in the the abuse phase, this is where that criticism comes in and our sense of value starts to erode because now we're wondering if what they're saying is true. Part of us is agreeing with what they're saying. We're like, yeah, maybe I really am this, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And it starts to, to degrade and erode our sense of value, our sense of confidence. And then when they go through the discard, when they throw us away, they stop talking to us, they, they replace us with TV, a game, another person, the dog, things like that, then our sense of worth is completely gutted because now they've taken the carrot away and they're punishing us for not getting the carrot. They're punishing us for not being the person they think uh, we should so that they can be happy with us. In other words, they're punishing us because we don't give them the cookie. That's called supply. And it's really, really important to understand that your, if you're experiencing this kind of dynamic, you're in what's called a, trans, in a transactional love relationship, or another term for it is called benefit-centered relating. Basically, the relationship exists to give a benefit to the other person. Now, what you want, what you feel, what you need is irrelevant. They just want their cookie, and once they get it, they're done with you. Just like when you get the, the donut and you eat the donut, you throw away the wrapper. You don't need the wrapper anymore. It's, it has no more utility for you. It's the same thing with benefit-centered or transactional relating. That's how it functions. So no wonder you lost yourself, guys. Because you gave yourself up in order to keep love, in order to survive this transactional experience, this abuse, this crazy. It's not a, actually a wrong thing in my point of view. It's a brilliant thing, especially if you grew up with this with a family. Because you didn't have any other choice. There was no other way out. There was no way to get through this. You had to do that to survive. Because what you figured out is, hey, if I chase that carrot, sometimes they'll give me a breadcrumb. And a breadcrumb's more, it's better than nothing. At least I'm not completely starving. At least I got a little love. And we figured out that, hey, if I can keep getting a little love, at least I can keep going. And so your brain's job is to keep you alive. And it determined how to do that by getting those breadcrumbs. Now that you've survived it, and now that you can exit this dynamic, you can move forward to healing and reclaiming yourself, rediscovering yourself. And the way I help people accomplish knowing themselves, loving themselves, and keeping themselves is through three specific phases. Phase one is healing yourself, and that's what the Rapid Heal System does that's where I teach you or lead you through uh, healing the shame fear guilt and fatigue that comes with narcissistic abuse and then t and then help you heal the trauma bond or love addiction that's often a result of this and then the second phase is called knowing yourself and this is where I teach you how to connect with uh, knowing living and loving who you are by understanding and living from your value voice and vision and that's the magic here, guys. When we start to really connect with and experience our innate value, the intrinsic worth that we be, then it gives rise. Hey, thank you, Tina. I appreciate you. Um, it gives rise to this expansion of your voice. And when you can connect with your voice, then suddenly this vision shows up. This awareness of what you want and what you don't want starts to paint itself. 
your happiness starts to define itself your well-being starts to get clearer because now you're getting in contact with your intrinsic worth and your intrinsic self and that empowers you to move into happiness and that's what I hope you accomplish in phase two knowing yourself and the courses behind that is the happiness strategy and today is the opening of enrollment for the happiness strategy it's a 10 week course where I lead you through connecting back to your innate value I help you liberate your innate value and connect to it and I help you tune into and hear your genuine or true voice and then help you connect with your genuine vision and move forward into your happiness by knowing and understanding you and then giving you practices that help you implement this into your real life so that you can start having relationships that reflect what you want jobs and businesses that bring you in the joy that you desire daily things that like imagine what it'd be like if you you enjoyed your daily life enjoy just being present with yourself there wasn't this huge uh, shame or guilt or emptiness or loneliness you're constantly wrestling with but instead that there's this internal warmth with yourself this kindness maybe even joy in being you that's the goal of the happiness strategy and I help you accomplish that by liberating your innate value tuning you into your true voice connecting you back with your genuine vision of your happiness you and your well-being so enrollment is open for that the link is above on Facebook below on YouTube there's 25 spots that are that are open for that 24 are currently available we start August 17th at 7 p.m. so three weeks from today guys now if you've lost yourself the first thing you can do to get back in connection with yourself is return back to your body and start asking yourself this question how does this fit me you can ask also ask this question what do I feel about this what are my feelings about it start that self-referencing practice that I call and that gets you back into your body gets you back into your awareness and if you want to go really deep on that practice join the happiness strategy I'd be happy to have you there and be honored to have you as one of my students guys remember that you're worth knowing loving and keeping remember that this is a journey back to yourself and sometimes it's a journey in discovering who you are for the first time because that's really what it was for me <laughs> and it is a discovery process it's not an event so be kind with yourself praise and appreciate the discoveries and efforts you're making in your own well-being and I will see you guys in our next training video. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.